Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining today, um, the first VVB training of 2020. Uh, it's one o'clock CET, I'm just going to wait for two more minutes perhaps, just to see if there's anyone else and, and then we'll start. Um, can I just check uh, if someone could perhaps confirm that they can see my screen, that would be great. Someone put their hand up. I assume that means yes. Thanks, Amit. Okay, I think, think that should be fine. So, yep, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, and welcome. So, um, just introduce myself. My name's Richard Eiliff. I'm Compliance Director at SustainCert. So, I'm going to deliver the VVB training for you today. Um, and without further ado, let me just talk you through what will be discussed. Um, so, as you can see on the screen, um, main purpose is technical updates, so this is broken into a few categories, so re a reminder, um, just of a few key points. Um, I will talk about COVID-19, because obviously that's um, you know at the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, then I'll go through some of the recent rule updates and clarifications issued by Gold Standard, talk about a, a couple of methodologies that have been updated as well. Um, and if we've got time, you know, we, we've only got an hour's um, session, I, I can talk you through the, the knowledge base resource that we've developed. So before I start, just some housekeeping. Um, so what, what, what I intend to do today um, would be to answer any questions that, that anyone has, um, rather than interrupt the flow of the presentation, if you could just use the, the, the kind of ask a question box. Um, just to register your your, your question, uh, that will also mean it's a, a written record. And for, for anyone who asks a question today, um, if we've got time at the end, I'll, I'll try and deal with it in a Q and A session. But if not, um, it will be dealt with um, with, with a follow up email, uh, and I'll share a transcript of, of all the questions and answers for everyone's benefit. Okay, so here we go. Starting off with um, just a reminder of some key points. Um, so th this is kind of a, a sort of standard slide, really, um, just to emphasize that um, Gold Standard and SustainCert have been working on better visibility uh, when rules change, when, when they're updated um, and clarified. Um, th there's two main types. Um, so rule updates and clarifications, just in case you weren't aware, rule updates are quite specific changes um, and these are generally approved by Gold Standard Technical Advisory Committee and clarifications, these are more when, you know, it's, it's a case that the rule isn't particularly clear um, and, you know, maybe it's a, an editorial change um, and so they're, they're kind of split out on the, the rule update page. Uh, general principle, um, bo both of these announcements will be eventually incorporated to the next version of the standard. That's expected to be April 21. Uh, it might be before then. Um, so I'll, I'll show you the page, I'm, I'm sure. Um, what uh, on the bottom, uh, this is a, a form. Um, it's been newly updated. Um, it's a form that, that you can um, share your details with Gold Standard and, and sign up to an automatic rule update. Um, it has been changed because um, people, and um, I count myself in that number, have um, struggled with these emails going straight to spam. So um, if you're not familiar with this, um, please do sign up. Yeah, the, um, that, that's the, the, the address for the, the rule updates page. And of course, the standard documents are here. I'm sure everyone's aware of that. Um, so just a reminder, version 1.2 of GS4GG is out. Uh, that was released in October last year. 
um, general principle being unless it's mentioned within a specific document, the, the, the rules um, apply retroactively. Um, you know, and, and the, the general principle is that um, these rule updates are there to make people's lives easier. And, um, you know, if, if anything is a significant change, there'll be a, a, an entry into force that will be listed within a, a document. Um, so, broadly speaking, what do the updated documents look like? So, the, the update in um, October of last year mainly focused on renumbering and, and just clarity in text. Um, so, to, to make the rule references much easier to, to understand and refer to. Um, so um yeah that that was uh, the the main purpose obviously the, the, there's been a few changes as well but um that was the the, the main purpose um there is a a very handy sheet that you can refer to um or, or i'll just show you it live back into that document there it gives a, a nice summary of the the, the main changes to, to each document um, which is quite a useful way of um finding out what the key ch changes are okay um a short update on vvb performance management system so um you know i i, I think we um rolled out um an, an improved system of conformity uh, checklists for design review and performance review also preliminary review uh, i think this was done maybe uh, a year ago, um, you know, time moves quickly. I've forgotten the exact date. Um, and when we did this, uh, we updated review forms. Um, and what you may have noticed is that review forms are now more addressed to VVBs. Um, and the purpose behind this was to incentivize better performance um, in the sense that, you know, v VVBs are representatives of um, project information when they submit a, a final report and an opinion. Um, and if there's anything that, you know, um, in our opinion is, is a shortfall, then really it does make sense that, that VVBs respond to that um, rather than project developers. So that's something you would have noticed. Um, Again, when, when these were redesigned, the, the, the purpose was they would be used to assess VVB performance. Um, and I, I would say, you know, to, to the end of certainly quarter two of this year, performance is assessed more on a target random approach. Um, we are going to make some improvements um, in the next couple of months. And so by the end of Q2, um, performance assessment will very likely happen after every review um, and the scoring system will be linked to key aspects of GS project certification. So um, SDG monitoring, safeguarding principles, materiality and in, in calculations. Um, and when we do this, we, we will share the, the system. Again, the, the purpose behind it is, is to provide constructive uh, and structured feedback, you know, so, so that everyone's on the same page with what the standard expects, um, you know, and in, in hopefully uh, to improve consistency across the board as well. So um, just to make everyone aware, I'm sure, sure you're aware of this from the, the VVB requirements, the, the results of performance assessment are shared with gold standard and they will take uh, the, the, the information and, and, and assessments we provide, they'll take that into account when they um, make a decision on, on renewal of VVB approvals, which as, as I'm sure you know, is on a 36 month basis, but uh, things happen, um, you know, perhaps more on an annual basis with the, the VVB exam that um, our colleagues in Gold Standard administer. So it, it is quite an important thing. You know, we we, we do want it to, to be useful and, and you know, a, a carrot as, as well as a stick. Um, so just to, to, to give you all an update uh, today and, uh, and watch this space um, over the coming months as we, we start to roll out improvements. So uh, moving on to the second topic, so COVID-19. Um, for those of you who are not aware uh, the, the Gold Standard have now formally published um, their, their interim measures um, to enable uh, stakeholders, so project developers, VVBs, sustained cert, you know, 
pretty much everyone who's involved in in the certification process to enable them where possible to to carry about carry on about their business during this very difficult time but also maintain the the, the rigor that's expected by the standard um, so there, there, there's a link on screen for, for those of you who are not aware that that's where you access it uh, and in fact dates hopefully um that that message came through creating that for, for those um who are not aware so there, there is a, a validity period for these interim measures um and that's shown on screen so basically from date of publication which was the 6th of april to the the 1st of september 2020 um you know obviously it's it's a pretty much unprecedented situation uh it's just never been dealt with before so things may change uh, it may be extended um it may be adjusted depending on regional geographies um so so do keep your eye out on it in case things change so um let's dig into what this means um so the the interim measures are structured per um, project cycle task. So the, the first one uh, to talk about is stakeholder consultations. So obviously they, they need a physical meeting um, and in many, many countries in the world um, there are social distancing and um, lockdowns in place so it's, it's not practical. Um, so the um, position really for, from gold standard is that the, the physical meeting can be postponed uh, until the, the, the COVID-19 situation uh, eases. Uh, of, of course, you will be aware that, that a physical meeting is, is a requirement. Um, so e either at the, the first consultation or at the stakeholder feedback round as well. So it's something that that, that is needed. It is postponed. Um, something that uh, can proceed uh, as normal is POA design consultations. Uh, v VVBs are not um, deeply involved in this, um, but um, because it's, it's more of a sustained cert review, but, but just to flag really that the, the design consultations can proceed as normal. Um, so uh, what, what does this mean? Um, in essence, where these postponements happen, um, the, the, the physical nature of the consultation does need to be conducted before the project is submitted for design review. Um, so what that means for, for VVBs is, in effect, that, that validation may proceed. Um, and, and of course, there's there's guidance on, on how that itself can proceed um, during this situation. But what um, what would be expected uh, as, as a minimum, of course, would be a, a transparent declaration of, of any gaps uh, in stakeholder assessment, because, you know, it's it's part part of the the, the VVB review, so um, so that's what we'd be looking to see and and um, yeah. Um, the, the the second area where um, where we need to talk about today is monitoring requirements. So obviously this is something that will affect project developers in the main, but um, your work will be affected as well. Um, in essence, the, the options um, available to project developers are, are three in number, and these are granted on a case-by-case -case basis by the Gold Standard Secretariat and uh, where necessary when in, in, involving members of the, the Gold Standard Technical Advisory Committee as well. Uh, so three um, broad approaches. So alternative monitoring. Um, so um you, you know perhaps something that might be envisaged there is, is use of technologies to replace um physical survey work postponement of the monitoring activity um so this this would mean in effect that the monitoring was was stopped and there would have to be some kind of um conservative assumption to to make sure that the emission reduction claim um what was conservative during the, the postponement the third option is a uh, an application for a gap in monitoring which essentially means you know the the project is on hold um and the the crediting period would be extended by the the gap period requested um so 
So, um, as mentioned, these would be administered by gold standard in the form of deviation requests. So they will um, have a start date and an end date for the monitoring period. Um, and the, the, the deviation automatically ends 28 calendar days from the gold standard end date of interim measures. So currently 1st of September 2020. Um, what is expected of VVBs is to look out for these deviations um, and ensure that they're followed correctly. So obviously taking into account the, the, the guidance on screen and that published in the interim measures, but also the, the, the specific approved deviation that Gold Standard and, and the Technical Advisory Committee have approved. Uh, the other area where we, we can expect some um, different processes um, and, and also deviations is on submission timelines. So uh, as you can expect, um, projects may um, experience delays as, as a result of certain milestones not being able to be completed. Um, a, a few examples on screen. So um, you know, submission of project within one year of start date, completion of validation within two years of the date of listing. Um, I won't go through all of them, but suffice it to say that the, the option is there for, for project developers to apply for an extension. Um, and these extension requests need to be submitted before the end date of interim measures. They will be approved. Um, and the role of the VVB really is to look out for these deviations and make sure that they are followed correctly. Okay, so talking um, about uh, the, the, the main uh, sort of uh, effect really on, on VVBs uh, is site visits. Um, you know, it's no news to, to any of you that um, on site visits, um, are much more challenging under the current circumstances. So um, Gold Standard have uh, approved flexibility. Um, it's important to note that these don't need a, a, a deviation request. Um, the, the onus is put on the VVB to, to put in place um, appropriate measures to, to, to make sure that, that rigor is maintained. So, and this is only in the case that site visits cannot be postponed. So, you know, where project developers have a, a buyer commitment to emission reduction purchased or, or similar. So in this case, uh, VVBs can um, replace the site visits with a desk based review um, and put in place um, a, a number of um, different sort of measures really uh, to, to make sure that, you know, the, the project's still subject to a, a, a thorough verification. Um, the, these are all um, available on the, the, the publication, so uh, I'm not going to go through them uh, line by line here. But you know, it, it, essentially, it's you know, it's, it's cross-checking uh, fr from a desk um, and use of um, communications technology to, to replace the site visit um, and cross-checking with other project documentation just to make sure that that claims are reasonable um, and you know that they, they are verifiable um, so so that's it you know so um, VVBs need to follow the requirements um, that there, there is the 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 option uh, for VVBs to propose different uh, measures than discussed on screen um, and that there'll be a, a, an email address that, that I'll uh, share with you shortly. Um, so a couple of timelines to be aware of. So the, the, the final, uh, the, the FBR needs to be um, submitted within six months of the end date of the interim measures. So um, what would that be? Uh, that's by March uh, 2021, um, you know, assuming that the end date is still 1st of September 2020. And another important point as well is that the, the, the maximum monitoring period which can be verified using these interim measures is two years. So again, watch out for that one. What um, is expected is that VVB shall transparently disclose in the, the, the final report uh, that, that it's undertaken by a desk-based review 
and and obviously you know we, we need to know and, and wider stakeholders need to know what the alternative means were and and the justification for for use of those uh, alternative means um, so hopefully that that's clear and it, and it allows um you know some flexibility to to carry on uh, with things um, and that email that, that I mentioned, so very much encouraged any, anyone who has suggestions, um, you know, particularly around validation and verification and uh, al alternative techniques, please refer to that email address and, and share your feedback with, with Gold Standard. So that's COVID. So ho hopefully that is of some reassurance. Um, you know, if there are any questions, do feel free to uh, drop a line in, in the question box and I will um, address it at the end of the call or, or you know, via uh, an, an email follow-up. So rule updates um, since the, the last training webinar. So we'll go into these now. So validation and verification by the same VVB. Um, so it's um, it's pretty much um, always been allowed. Really, it's just that there, there, there were um, certain exclusions, um, and the, the the gold standard have now clarified that these exclusions are now no longer applicable. Uh, so projects, programs, interventions, um, certification types, different pathways, different scales. Um, the, the, the same VVB may validate and verify uh, and in particular without um, a, a deviation or prior authorization from the gold standard secretariat. Um, but the, uh, there are a, a number of things that uh, a VVB needs to do to make sure that the, um, the audit, um, particularly verification, um, has, has high integrity and it's impartial um, and so quite specifically uh, the, the expectation is that the entire verification audit team uh, so, so that's lead auditors, auditors, sectoral experts are different from the team that performed the, the validation activity uh, and so this includes um, inclusions of, of VPAs, CPAs as well. Uh, so that needs to happen and also there needs to be a transparent disclosure in the verification report that the same VVB has performed the validation activity. Um, and within that, the, the, the details of the original audit team need to be declared such that, you know, it can be easily checked that indeed that there was a different audit team at validation and at verification. And so that's the approach really to, to ensure um, impartiality in the review. Um, so uh, an important note, because the, the, there is a slight contradiction. So this requirement doesn't apply to combined design certification. Um, so many of you are aware combined design certification is allowed, of course, for retroactive projects, but it's also allowed for normal cycle projects um, for the first verification only. Um, so this requirement doesn't apply in that particular case, um, but there are certain safeguards around that, which uh, I think are on the, the, the next slide or indeed on, on a, a later clarification. So uh, other safeguards as well, you know, uh, Gold Standard do retain the right to take action in the case of um, fraud or, or deliberate um, uh, deliberate malpractice, um, which includes, uh, for, from your perspective, uh, cancellation of VVB approval status. So, you know, it, it is a, a serious requirement and gold standard will be um, paying attention to it. Um, so this rule comes into force from the 2nd of October in 2020. Um, and this pertains to VVB agreements that take place after this date um, and the, the, the VVB needs to meet the, the, the different audit team requirements as, as previously mentioned. Um, so in the case of POAs, um, this uh, rule update can be applied immediately. 
um, uh, provided a, a different audit team is used for verification activities. Again, uh, no prior approval is needed, um, but the the sort of points around transparency and, and different team um, is needed. So uh, the, the the second rule update concerns eligibility requirements for renewable energy. So you you will have been aware that um, a, a new rule concerning eligibility for renewable energy projects came into force on the twenty fourth of January twenty twenty. Um, just to note, a uh, an exception to that is waste to energy projects involving biogas are exempt from this rule. Um, so the, the, there is a, an official clarification on this that, that I'll talk about later. Um, so th there are exceptions to the uh, new eligibility requirements. So essentially, if a renewable energy project is in an LDC, LLDC or SIDS, so small island developing state, um, you know, that, that there is a, uh, a sort of filter that will screen out if projects are in a uh, an upper middle income country or higher, or if the, the proposed project technology has a penetration rate greater than 5%. Um, they're ineligible for gold standard certification of any time, any any type, so VERs or, or CERs. Um, so the, the the rule update um, comes into force for for projects submitting for preliminary review af after the um, 24th um, of Jan 2020. Um, you know, obviously preliminary review comes to sustain cert first, so we will have um, kind of uh, weeded out um, the, the projects that, that are not eligible, but, um, you know, as, as with many things, you know, a, a VVB opinion is, is also needed, so do, do watch out for it as well. So to, to note that there are exceptional circumstances, um, you know, th these will uh, be approved on a case-by-case -case basis by gold standard, not sustained cert. Um, so involves publishing a memo and in effect, if there's an approval, there will be a document somewhere that um, either our, ourselves or, or you sell, yourselves will be um, looking for in the review if you think that um, a project is, is not in an LDC, LLDC or SIDS. Uh, there needs to be one of these exceptions, otherwise it's ineligible. So there, there was a, uh, a further rule update to clarify what these eligibility requirements mean for POAs, because obviously POAs have the ability to expand over time. So there's um, the rule comes into play in different ways for different uh, POAs depending on the where they're at in the project cycle. So for registered POAs, they can continue adding new VPAs um, until the, the time of the next renewal of the POA. So when that happens, it, essentially the, the, the POA inclusion criteria need to be updated to reflect the eligibility requirements and then new VPAs, CPAs, must follow the, the, the eligibility screen. Um, so what that means is there's there's flexibility um, for, for current POA periods, but the, the moment they renew, uh, the, the new rules come into play. Um, so just, um, you know, as, as you would expect, you know, v, VPAs that, that are included, um, you know, they, they can continue crediting um, as, as per normal. It's, it's an eligibility rule, not a, uh, a kind of uh, rule that, that comes into play halfway through the, the crediting period. Just to note that registered POAs are not allowed to extend the boundary of the registered POA to include new countries um, or new renewable technology types. So it's uh, pr pr pretty obvious there to, to avoid POAs um, wriggling around the rules by um, including new countries um, that may fall under this um, this rule. So, um, yep, that's that's not allowed. So um, keep keep an eye out for that one. Um, so, what this rule means for, for validated um, or listed POAs? So, those uh, types of POAs need to complete validation. 
um, and submit the request for design certification by the 24th of October 2020. Um, and the, the POA boundary, you know, defined uh, at the start needs to be unchanged, again, guarding against um, adjustments in POAs to, to get around the rules. And same principle as well, next renewal of the POA uh, inclusion criteria need to be updated in line with the new eligibility rules. Um, I think that's the, the, the main point on that slide. So uh, how this rule works for new POAs, so any POA submitted for listing after the announcement, uh, which was on the 24th of October 2019, needs to define the VPA CPAs um, as per the, you know, the renewable um, eligibility activity re requirements. Um, so in, in essence, you know, if, um, if you submitted after the, the rule was known, then you need to fall in line with the rule. Uh, so some of the clarifications, so the, these are a bit more minor in nature. Um, having said that, th this is a fairly, uh, fairly uh, sort of large update in a sense. Um, so GMOs, uh, many of you may be aware, uh, the previous position on GMOs was that any GMOs in a gold standard project means that they cannot be design certified. So this rule clarification means that in essence, if projects can take place on uh, systems that, that have GMOs in the baseline, but any project that relies on the use of GMOs is not eligible. So perhaps a, a, an example there. So if a uh, that there was say an agriculture project that um, you know in, involved in improved efficiency of uh, I don't know um, or, or a fuel switch in, in combine harvesters, but the, the the corn in the project happened to be GMO corn, um, that's clearly nothing to do with the project. The previous rule would not have allowed um that project for design certification now it is allowed because the 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 gmos are in the baseline and nothing to do with the the, the project activity so um so that really was it was an example related to agriculture so what this means for forestry um any anything involving gmo planting is not eligible you know again it's, it's very clear you know if, if you're planting trees and their GMO, it's obviously part of the project activity. So that that's not allowed. Um, so any projects that um, in, involve um, herbicides or pesticides being used in the baseline um, related to GMOs, so potentially something like Roundup, so continuation of the these product uh, products in the project need to be assessed in line with the safeguarding principles um, that, that govern pesticides and fertilizers. Um, so as, as a wider point, um, to do with GMOs, exceptions can be granted on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, this will be done by gold standard. Um, where it happens, there will be a, a document, um, you know, uh, confirming that that indeed a, a particular innovative approach, let's say, for, for with, with significant potential uh, for GHG emissions or sequestration uh, or any other type of SG, SDG benefit, um, it, it is possible. In in theory, gold standards are open to um, application, uh, but is by no means guaranteed. So it's um, very much on a case by case basis. Um, the, the second clarification, so some small changes in performance shortfall, uh, so this does fall under the, the VVB uh, purview, um, so that there is a sentence removed re related to actions taken, um, so, so really what this slide is about is uh, how projects should deal with performance uh, shortfalls, so in, in it's around compensation with, with um, with VERs, so uh, and it's scenario dependent. So r rather than kind of go through every particular scenario um, on the screen, would encourage you to to see the the, the detailed rule updates. 
but um, suffice it to say that there's there's three main options. So compensate using an equivalent number of GSVERs that were not affected by the the reversal uh, or, or shortfall event um, that that are available in the, the project's registry account, or a project may compensate using an equivalent number of VERs purchased from another gold standard project or may compensate using an equivalent number of VERs uh, from the compliance buffer pool. So it's a really, it's, it's, it's about the, the, the mechanism used to um, correct for, for things um, that, that sadly happened in the project that, that were not foreseen, just to make sure that um, emission reductions are not issued where they should not be. Um, so in the case of performance shortfall, all active PERs and VERs get locked um until the, the the compensation um happens so again you know that the these options are not always available uh, they are scenario dependent so would, would encourage you to to dig into those in a bit more detail um so the the, the next clarification is related to luf activity requirements so it, it basically confirms that the requirements for smallholder um, should be applicable to all eligible LUF projects um, and the, 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 the title has been amended to reflect this. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to do a time. And check. So, rule clarification for rotation forestry projects under AR methodology. So it's the, the, the gold standard AR methodology. So um, a few points to note. So project crediting period must cover the full rotation cycles. So let's take, for example, if a project has a 15 year rotation period, then the crediting period needs to be between 30 and 45 years just to cover that, that, that full rotation cycle. Um, a key point as well is the plantation must remain standing at the end of the registered crediting period. Um, you know, I, I suppose that's that's re reasonably obvious so that in, in effect um, at the end of certification there is some, you know some emissions benefit that, that has been um, achieved but by the project and it has remained standing um, when certification ceases. Um, the, the CO2 performance must be assessed against original growth models rather than models with a long-term average. Um, and you know where, where performance shortfall happens, um, VVB and PD need to follow the, the performance shortfall guidelines. So not sure how many of you are LUF VVBs, but um, the, the performance short four guidelines are there, would encourage you to check them. Um, so to assess accuracy of long-term averages, um, the, the, the verification needs to take place in the year prior to felling of trees um, in, in rotation forestry projects. So, and this is regardless of when uh, previous or next uh, verification takes place. So, um, so that's you know re really to to make sure that the numbers are correct on that long term average. Um, so this is a clarification that I referred to earlier. So it's just calling out the exception really to renewable energy eligibility requirements, um, waste to energy projects involving biogas uh, to electricity um, generation, they're, they're exempt from the eligibility criteria. They're the only uh, technology that is. Um, and so what this means is these types of projects can be um, in any, any country uh, as per normal, don't, don't have to be in the, the LDC or SIDS or places with less than 5% penetration. And, you know, I'm sure everyone's aware of the, the rationale behind this, uh, that, that biogas is a, um, a typically highly additional uh, project. Uh, they're pretty expensive. And, and so therefore they, they fall outside of the eligibility screen. Um, just to clarify as well, renewable biomass. So biogas, you know, to, to, depending on your 
viewpoint is a, a type of renewable biomass. There, there is a further clarification that, that just makes it clear. Biomass residue um, and biomass from plantations, they are not considered uh, in the same way as a biogas project. They do fall within the eligibility screen and they must demonstrate um, that you know that they're not in an upper middle income country or higher or uh, the penetration rate of that technology uh, is not higher than five percent <throat> uh, so there, there, there is a, a clarification uh, and again I, I referred to this um, earlier so it's to do with combined validation and verification at, at that first verification so when 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 one reads the rules um uh it's I, I i would say it's it's obvious to people that uh retroactive certification is limited to two years uh it's just that particular rule was in a different um part of uh, the, the the document so this clarification makes that much clearer for people um what what it, it also makes clear as well and this new nuance might be lost is that you know whenever a project undergoes combined validation or verification whether it's normal or retroactive that that, that maximum of, of two years is applicable um in in both cases um so um so it's, it's a, a nuance that's not necessarily obvious so that that's the purpose of that clarification So um, many of you will be familiar with this uh, rule clarification. I think that there, there, there are a number of um, applications um, for, for deviations after this rule clarification was issued. Essentially, it's the, the, the principle that the gold standard POAs, yes, that there are different rules for gold standard POAs as um, defined in the, the program of activity requirements, but as a general principle, um, CDM POA requirements are the, 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 the base standard, really. Um, so where it, it can be thought of that the gold standard program of activity requirements defines the exceptions to CDM rules for, for the purposes of gold standard certification. Um, so this particular point wasn't clear, um, uh, it is now, and an, an important point to bear in mind as well is that this applies to all gold standard POAs, um, you know, for, for sort of every, um, every version really. Um, so yeah, so that was, I, I think it was much clearer before gold standard for the global goals uh, i think in version 2.2 um it was clear that the cdm poa requirements were the the base standard um it's now been clarified for us all that um it is for gold standard for the global goals as well i do want to draw your attention uh because many of you will be aware that the the, the cdm has um different rules than gold standard about using the the same vvb for um for validation and verification activities that exception holds true um in the gold standard system so you know pr provided vvbs fall in line with the impartiality principles the, the same vvb can be used for inclusion and verification for instance, um, and you know, large-scale validations and verifications. Again, that that's also possible in the gold standard system, as long as impartiality is demonstrated. Um, so the, the the third and final part of the the, the technical updates is um, just to draw your attention to some updates in methodologies. Um, it's a very short slide. This um, the, the the simplified methodology for efficient cook stoves. So m many of you will be aware that it's it's for micro scale projects only. So possibly hasn't come across uh, your your desks that often. Uh, but just to draw your attention, there there were some minor errors in the methodology draft. 
and the calculation tool uh, and they've been updated so that's good um so soil uh, organic carbon activity modules um so the um the gold standard released a new framework methodology the, the soil organic carbon framework methodology in which modules can be proposed for approval uh, so that there is now uh, guidance for de development and uh, approval of, of these modules under this framework methodology. I think this is geared more towards project developers um, and obviously methodology developers, but just making uh, you all aware of it as well. Um, and the third update on um, methodologies is rotation, rot rotation, sorry, forestry projects under the AR methodology under the gold standard one um it just that that methodology has been updated providing um more clarity on assessment criteria um that needs to be considered for these uh rotation forestry project types um and also a a tool um for long-term co2 fixation calculations has also been provided as well um, so that, that that will be of use to to you and your work, the um, the, the, the calculation tool. Um, so we would encourage you to check that one out. Okay, so um, that's the end of the um, sort of formal updates. So we, we've got around 15 minutes left. So I'll, I'll just uh, talk very briefly about the sustained cert knowledge base. Um, it's it's geared for project developers in the main, I would say, but um, I, I do think it would be useful for VVBs. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, the, the, the knowledge base, you know, this is what it looks like. It's on the, the Sustain Cert website. Um, and what a knowledge base effectively is, is um, a, a, a series of, of FAQs that are um, dynamically searchable. So I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, other websites you use will have a, a kind of search box in which you, you type in a question, you know, how do I develop a gold standard project or, um, you know, wh where can I find the rules for VVBs? Um, this help desk is designed on that same principle. So what we do to administer it behind the scenes is we assign keywords to articles that, that we uh, publish on this help desk. Um, and it's those keywords that enable people to search dynamically um, on the knowledge base. Um, that's what it looks like. So you, you would enter your, your search terms there. Um, and the, the idea really of this uh, help desk is to provide um, a, a list of frequently asked questions so that people don't have to um, raise a, a, a ticket and, and ask us for um, a resolution to a particular query. Um, if we've already answered it, we will put it on the help desk for the benefit of everyone. So it's obviously it's to minimize the, the number of times we answer the same question. But one of the important advantages as well is it means that we are better able to give a consistent response. So, you know, if we've answered one person in one way, um, this help desk will mean that that um, response is available to others uh, so that they can benefit and per perceive uh, what we've said in the same way. Um, so again, pointing to um, a, a drive that, that we have to try and increase consistency in what we do. So the, the knowledge base is um, structured in different areas. So I, I, I do I do think so, some of these um, could, could be useful for, for VVBs. For, for instance, you know what what is the program of activity submission start date? Um, that that clarification is in there because prior to the recent update, it wasn't actually clear in the standard. So um, you, you know, it, it, it is going to be useful for um, understanding um, some of the nuances in the standard um, that we've been able to clarify either, you know, 
ourselves following you know internal discussion or with consultation with with gold standard and so that's the purpose of this knowledge base really it's it's geared towards project developers but some of some of the uh, sort of rule based inquiries on this uh, and solutions on this will be useful for VVBs as well um yeah so so i, th I think that's um you know here, here is a, a an example so um so so you know i, I think that could be a, a legitimate vvb question as well you know do, are these eligibility rules for renewable energy applicable to mini grids uh, obviously grid is in there um but mini grids are, are slightly different and it also clarifies the fact that csa uh, requirements govern mini grid and, and off grid renewable energy projects rather than the renewable energy activity requirements. So it, it is actually quite useful. If you do use it, click uh, and you find it helpful, click yes. If you do use it and it's not very good, click no. You know, so it's it's a way of uh, communicating with us as well, um, and you know, people providing real time feedback on on the service that we're providing. <clears throat> So um, thank you very much for listening. I have a number of questions. Um, we, we, we've got 10 minutes. I will, uh, my, my first challenge is to, to, to be able to, to read the questions. I'm just gonna do that now. Uh, I need to minimize my screen. Um, okay. Uh, um, I, I have a, a question from Sukanta. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to read it, but unfortunately, it's it's very difficult on my screen. Um, okay. In case a site visit exemption is required, do the VVB need to submit a deviation request form? Um, uh, hopefully, uh, you you asked that question before I covered it on the slide. It's a good question. The the answer is no. Uh, site visit exemptions previously, Sustainsa were uh, approving these uh, before the gold standard uh, official. Uh, publication now uh, the answer is no that, that there isn't a need to um, submit that deviation request form now that the the COVID interim measures have been published so <clears throat> thanks for that Sukanta so next question is from Samuel so in case there is a, a, a diverge, divergent interpretation of the rules between the project developer and the VVB how is this resolved uh, that that's a, a good question. Um, the, the, the VVB is the, the person who uh, has has sort of greater authority on, on the rules. And then, if if the VVB themselves are not sure, then the the, the next person to to ask on interpretation of the rules is sustain cert. But yeah, you know, to to, to be clear, um, it's the the, the VVB takes the and, and makes the, the the certification uh sort of opinion um so they they are the person who interprets the rules obviously if there's a, a disagreement and you know it, it helps um you know sustains are, are happy to to deal with any any queries that you may have so thanks for that samuel so a question from vikash so in case a VVB performs the validation or verification without conducting on-site inspection, but based on alternative measures, would this require a deviation request? Uh, so it's the same question as Sukanta. So the, you know, as, as per the, the interim measures, no, it's not a, um, a deviation request. Um, so a question from Ram regarding demonstration of impartiality of validation and verification is it allowed to use one team member from the validation team during the sub subsequent verification the answer to that ram unfortunately is no uh, the, the the teams do need to be different um so yeah um so thanks for that question um a question from anil so if the LSC isn't handled by PP and LSC review will not be completed. Um, is there any pre-review via um, gold, uh, gold standard uh, sustain sir? And will there be any FARs during the, the VVB during the validation? Um, yes, as, as per normal, 
um, it is possible that there may be FARs, um, you know, the, um, the, the, you know, in the current circumstances, the, the FARs are not going to be, you know, there, there must be a physical inspection by the VVB, for example, but yes, you know, in, in line with normal procedure, um, during preliminary review, FARs can be issued by sustained cert for the VVB at the time of validation. Um, okay, so a question from Fulia. Uh, the period until the 2nd of October is not clear. Uh, the, the same VVB with the same audit team can be performed combined or separately. Um, I will prepare a written response to, to that one for you because I, you know, if, if it didn't come across clearly in, in the presentation, I, I obviously not, not made it fully clear. It, it is quite difficult to, to explain it. I, I do agree. So I will prepare a, a, a written response to that. I'll share it with you and everyone else attending. Um, so a question from Champok. So for validation verification by same VVB, uh, so far in case of the small scale projects, the same has been allowed. Will this change now? Um, yes, uh, it, it will change in the sense that the um, that the audit team do need to be different as per these rules, um, and it will come into effect. On the 2nd of November and so you know noting Fulia's point as well um, Champok you also have the question about effective date um, so your question is is the contract signed by VVB until this date it, it's it's for the rules come into effect for contracts signed by VVB after this date but I do agree um, I, I think a written clarification from me um, and I'll, I'll just check it out with my colleagues in Gold Standard about how these rules apply in the period until the the, the, the 2nd of October 2020. I, I think that would benefit from um, a written clarification that I'll share with you all. Okay, so um, a question again from Sukanta. In, in case a stakeholder feedback round physical meeting is not conducted during preliminary review, during the validation process, a deviation request needs to be submitted. So in case that wasn't clear, and so thanks for the question, um, the consultations are, are not handled by a, a deviation request. So um, Gold, Gold Standard's position on um, consultations is that the physical meeting needs to happen at some point but validation can proceed. It's just design review cannot start um, until uh, the physical meeting has taken place. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Sukanta. So um, we, we've got three minutes left. So what, what I'll do, um, I'll prepare a written transcript to, to all of the questions that, that people have posed, um, you know, maybe I might be able to make things slightly more clear as, as well um, and I will address the, 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 the queries that, that Fulia and, and Champok have raised about the, um, the, the, the same VVB point and, and just make sure that's clear with a, a, a transcript. So um, thanks to you all for attending um, and if there's no more questions, um, you are very welcome to send them to uh, the help desk at Sustain Cert, and you know, pr provided we receive them before, let's say Wednesday next week, I'll um, incorporate a response to them and share them with everyone who's attended. But thanks very much for your attendance. Thanks for your questions, and I wish you a good day. Thanks all. Bye.